Hello, just Jamie here. Thanks for checking out my latest emulation video. So before I start this video, I just want to say thanks for watching it and uh, thanks for all my subscribers you know, tuning in to watch my latest emulation videos. I do a range of different videos on my channel, music, tuition, obviously emulation, tuition, gameplay and modern games, so everything. So I need your support to upgrade the channel, as it were. I need new microphones, I need new backdrops, I can't keep going on using this. So I need a lot of stuff to enhance my channel to make it so much better. But anyway, uh, check out links in my description and enjoy the video. Take care. Okay, so let's get started with today's tutorial. So firstly, for my American viewers, uh, this system, it might look a bit familiar to you, but in, say, America, this was the Timex, whereas in the UK, this was obviously the Sinclair ZX81. So this was Clive Sinclair's attempts at entering the computer market at the time uh, for a much more budget price compared to what was already around, such as the BBC. And just before I start this tutorial, if you're interested in British computing history, I just released a Auric documentary film, which you'll find also on my channel. So let's get stuck into this emulator tutorial. So for this, I'm using a very good emulator, and this is 81. So link is going to be in my description, as always. So let's just go ahead and download this 81 Sinclair emulator. Not only does this one cater for ZX81, but it also caters for a few different Sinclair models. But like I said, this emulator tutorial is strictly focused on the ZX81. And if you want to watch other tutorials on Sinclair emulation, I've done another one on the Spectrum. So check that one out, and that's also in my playlist. So, once we've downloaded this file, which you can grab again from my description, I'm going to just drag this out and I'm going to create a new folder on my desktop. I'm going to right click, go to new and folder. And by the way, I use Windows 11 for these tutorials. I'm going to just call this folder in capitals ZX81, or you can name this whatever you want. This is going to be where your folders and your games are going to be going. So entirely up to you where you want this folder to go. So I'm going to just drag the 81 zipped into my folder I've just created. I'm going to right click on this compressed zip file inside. I obviously use WinRAR. Uh, you might use another extraction tool. Okay, so we've got all the goodness out of this compressed file and we can now delete this compressed zip and just delete it. We no longer need that. So the first thing you need to be aware of is that you won't need any ROMs. Uh, you won't need any of that with this emulator. If we go into the ROM folder here, it's got a good set of ROMs in there already, which is really cool. So let's back out of this. So let's just go and open up the 81 emulator. So if we just double left click on this application, it will take us straight in. So it will take us straight in. So like I say a minute ago, there's no reason to look around on the net for ROM files for 81. It's got them in there, well certainly for the ZX81 uh, part of the emulation. So we can play about with some settings just there. As you heard and you've seen me just a minute ago, I disabled a beeper sound, which is of course that really old school RF sound of that static noise. So again, to enable this, to give us that real true sound of how this would have sounded back in the day you can either go on to this option here beeper sound or of course press f4 so of course pressing f4 is going to disable that feature and your features here with 81 for zx81 if we go under options and we go under tv emulation we got many different options here to play around with things to make this look a bit more true to life, like you're using the real machine. So for example, if I go to advanced effects, I've currently got this one enabled. So for example, if I go to artifacts enabled, it will give us more of that scanline look as you would have likely seen back in the early 80s using one of these. We've also got simple ghosting, which is going to give us a slight blur, a slight ghost effect. But anyway, let's load up a game. 
before you can actually see the true features of those uh, TV emulation settings. So I'm also giving you the link in the description for this website. This is ZX81 stuff and on this website, it's a very comprehensive website. Uh, you're going to have different options here to download different programs, different games. So if I just go under the collection, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and download a game and I'm going to randomly pick uh, Alien. And under here, it's got lots of different information, who the publisher was, which is PSS. Uh, also the release date of this one being 1982 and it also tells us how much memory we need to run this game uh, Thankfully the emulator itself is already pre-configured uh, to run from 16k So if we go to downloads just below I'm going to download this image which is a .tzx file image And once this is downloaded I'm going to just drag this onto my desktop and I'm going to drag it into that ZX81 folder I just made, just to make things a bit smarter, a bit more tidier. So once this is dragged into your folder, we're going to see it right here, Alien Top TC ZX. No need to extract these games. The emulator 81 runs these just well in that format. So let's open up the emulator again. And to load this, all I'm going to do is go to File. I'm going to go to Open Tape. And from here, I'm going to find where this game is. So obviously, I'll just put this one into my ZX81 folder. And there it is. So Alien TZX, open. And it automatically loads for you. So you don't need to be messing around with typing in commands. Uh, so here we go. This is the beginnings of the game. Do you want instructions? Uh, I guess so. So it gives us a brief story of this game press any key so how to play so it's also given us the instructions how to play the game using a keyboard which of course largely back in the day zx81 were a keyboard affair until the zx uh, 48k came along so let's try this out so these are our keys and we need to press s to start the game here okie dokes so to be fair, I have no idea what this game is about. I played a couple of ZX81 games and I was very impressed with the Monster Maze game like a lot of people was. I think that was quite a, a game changing game back in the day, adding that uh, 3D effect, that 3D realism to things. So yeah, that's pretty much how you uh, play the ZX81 games. Don't worry about unextracting them. As you can see, they run just well in zip format. So something else which I'm going to show you, uh, say you need to do something and you're halfway through a game or you need to save your game progress, 81 is going to allow you to actually save your games. So if we go to file here, whilst you're inside the game, whilst you've got it running, go to file. If we go to save snapshot, you'll get a new window come up, save as. In here, under file name, you just enter a save file for it. So I'm going to just call this one. For example, save, and that's it. So just press save. And let's say, for example, I got a bit further in this game, so it looks completely different from what I see in front of you right now. To load it back up, we're just gonna go back to file, and we're gonna go to load snapshot. And there we see our save, which I've just saved. So double left click, and there you go. As you can see, as it booted back up in my save, that little flicker came. So let me show you a bit more how these filters work, which I showed at the beginning. So if we go back to options once again, and if I go to TV emulation, from here we got a range of options to manipulate that image to give you a nice, fresh, vibrant look of whiteness or grayness, or you can go for the very old school options. So let's check this out, artifacts enabled. So there's your bright, vivid look and we would also add simple ghosting once we got artifacts enabled so try that again and there we go simple ghosting and it does add a little bit of a blurry effect to it and we've got interlace display and advanced effects and so on and so forth you won't break the system by playing around with these settings and of course here we got little adjustments for the brightness, the contrast 
and all this is working in real time as the game or the program is loading. So of course, should we need the actual keyboard of the ZX81 on screen for any reason at all? Say for example you don't have a keyboard and you've already got a cursor or your mouse working. This keyboard, virtual keyboard here, is very handy. Very handy. To get that beeper sound once again, let's listen to what this sounds like. Let's talk about full screen options. If I go to options once again, if I go to display settings, and from here, I can change renders, but in my case, direct control is working just fine. Uh, resolution, so obviously it changes according to your screen preferences. For example, I'm using a 1080p, so I'm going to just select 1080p. We've also got a letterbox option here to make this a bit wider and you know so on and so forth and finally one last thing i'm going to show you if you truly want that real nostalgic look like you are using a real zx81 if we go to view just here and border size we can change borders on the actual emulator screen so let's check this out if we go to large it's going to give us all those artifacts on each side and again if we go back to view and border size we go to full frame and you know, it just adds to that charm. So let's combine this back with the beeper sound. So that's it for my ZX81 tutorial. So as you can see, it's a very good system. It does a lot. Uh, the only thing it won't do by the seams of things is emulate a controller. But like I said, back in the days when ZX81 was around, Controllers like that didn't really exist. They didn't really come along into the mainstream until a good couple of years, few years afterwards. So, um, like I said at the beginning of this video, if you're interested in British computer history, check out my Auric documentary film. I'll leave the link to that in my description as well. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you later.